Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars, some of the most talented people. There really aren't many legends left. There certainly aren't icons left, and you're one of them. Congratulations. <laughs> you are so lovely. I, you know, I don't, I don't really think about that. And it was just this last year, I think, when when we decided to do our ninth year here. We were supposed to be here six weeks, and um, we were putting together a new video of all the people we've worked to and or worked with, and we looked at each other and said, my gosh, we've worked with everybody. And it was just, you know, I tell the audience every night, thank you so much. I never thought that I would be performing at this age, you know, 29. Exactly. <laughs> and you look it. I mean, we're going to get to what you look like in a bit, but let's get to the show first of all. I came to see it in the opening year, and it was wonderful then. And there are things you do in this show that you do every night, and I think the reason this is probably the greatest show on the strip for headliners, you make it look like you want to be there, mm -hmm. you make it look like opening night, and that stuff you do together is so fresh, and that's refreshing, because in this town, people do get bored, don't they? That's the toughest thing. Well, I, I think it's in any any entertainment, you know, it's... It's my job to have fun every night. Now, Donnie likes things very set. He likes to do it the same way every night. And I don't. <laughs> you're trouble, and that's what you're I saying. I am trouble. <laughs> I'm the redhead. And so, <laughs> but, um, you know, I like to just keep shaking him up and moving things around. And to me, that keeps it fresh. And um, my gosh, it's fun. And the audience is different every night. So uh, it's never quite the same show. You can have you know, a, a template or whatever that you can base base it off of. But uh, I get the and I love the energy of the audience. You do know how exceptional it is that you're packing this place night in and night out. Okay. I think that's legacy, isn't it? There's a trust, there's a respect and the fact that we've all grown up together. You are so sweet. You know, this room is a smaller room. So, you know, if we wanted to go into a bigger one, we could do more production and bigger this and that. And Donnie and I said, you know, there's an intimacy at the Flamingo. This room is very unique. This this is the kind of showroom I grew up in as a child performing with, you know, Sammy Davis Jr. and Frank Sinatra and, you know, Elvis played rooms, rooms like this. And um, it's the last of, of those. It, it can make you uncomfortable as an entertainer or you can really connect to the audience. And I think people feel that when they come here. And maybe that's one of the things they like about this show. And do you know where it starts with the ushers? You come through the door Lovely. and you say to him, when did you start working here? And he says, 1969. I know. And then you go, You're all right. Bo and Jerry and all those guys. Right. Yep. I wonder the, the relationship between you and Donnie on that stage. How hard is it to get through the show? Because I know he does get on your nerves a bit, well, doesn't we he? Are, we have a chemistry. It's like an acid peel. <laughs> <laughs> an acid peel. Yeah. <laughs> a chemistry of sorts. Um, you know what? I think maybe that's why it works is because everybody has that sibling that relationship periodically where you just you just go places you shouldn't but it's okay because you're siblings <laughs> we have been through so much history we didn't work a long time together you know i was doing broadway shows and recording and and doing my own thing and we when the opportunity came to do las vegas we thought yeah they'll be fun for for a few weeks so here we are still here and I notice every time I've been the you know show, why? go ahead. He needs me. And you make him look good. That's what I like about you. You bring glamour to a very ordinary man. You know, really. what can I say? That's <laughs> You're so cute. I've seen the various incarnations of this show, and I think this is the most perfect and beautiful it's ever been. That opening montage you do. And what I love, you're still relevant today. You mix the new with the old, with the classic, with the stuff we love and the songs that we grew up with. I think it's the fact you're still current that makes the show edgy. You know, it's crazy. It's like my new album, Music is Medicine. I mean, it debuted number 10 on Billboard. And it's crazy. Like I said in the in the show, the video went viral the first day. And, and so there's this whole new generation. It's like when I go to these children's hospitals, uh, they just thought I was the Nutrisystem chick, you know? And now, <laughs> now I'm an alien <laughs> and they think I'm super cool and so <laughs> but I think you have to keep you have to stay relevant the number that I do I can only do it here in Las Vegas where I become the 25 iconic faces uh, you know that's a fun number in the show and it's just an artsy piece but it took us about a year to do that and 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 you know like opera and things like that Vegas is the place where you get to expand and do those kinds of things so you know as long as as we're here we'll always keep trying to to do something fresh and new for the audience. And that is a showstopper, but then it leads into that classical segment of the show where you steal it. Where and I you kick Donnie's butt. Really? <laughs> 
and you raise the roof. I love you. Uh, my mother used to say your 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 initials are M O, and your your mode of operandum is to keep them all humble. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? I was looking on Facebook just the other day, and there seems to be a wedding every three days because there's so many Isn't of it crazy? you. Crazy, it's so funny. It's cost a fortune in gifts. Oh no, I don't give. <laughs> <laughs> Your no. gift is turning up. Exactly. <laughs> Do you love that? That now there is a community of you. I mean, the, the family started off as the brothers and Marie, and then it became the wives and the brothers and Marie and your husband, and now there's children and grandchildren. It's Even- great. Yeah, it's insane. It's really crazy. And, and I feel like because I'm the only girl and uh, it's my nephews and nieces are so cute. I'm Auntie M. Auntie M. <laughs> and um, I just kind of feel this this matriarchal thing when my mother passed away and I check up on them periodically and they'll check in with me and say, hey, Auntie M, how you doing? And we're doing this or we're doing that. And uh they're just really beautiful kids. They're all really great kids. And it must be great to be you, because I mean, when I talked to the brothers, Meryl, I spoke to the other day, and Jimmy. So sorry. I know it's a shame, well, isn't it? It is. <laughs> I spoke slowly, but they were grateful. I spoke and they- <laughs> slowly. <laughs> we need a hang. <laughs> they really are lovely brothers. And then we look at you as a human being, and you are delicious. You know that. <laughs> you are so cute. I like you a lot. Doesn't come easy, does it? Wouldn't you never date a ginger, though? Would you? Let's face it. <laughs> you are it'd be like it'd be like doing charity work. Why would you say that? My <laughs> grandmother was a ginger. I know. She and Donnie has kids who are gorgeous. Child, she was beautiful. To go back to my question, you never I date a ginger. Yes, I did. You you, you, you feel sorry for us. Why would you? There's a sympathy. You terrible. I can see it in your eyes. You know what? You sh- no. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> spank you. I'd rather like that. No. <laughs> Now, no, we must stop this because you've got remarried. And this is what we talked about last time. I mean, how amazing in life to go that full circle where you fall in love. Isn't that insane? It's insane. The whole story is crazy. And if you would have asked me if that would have happened. Well, first of all, my husband never remarried. I'm a hard habit to break. I wonder whether there was an element of that. I mean, I've I've heard you talk about this a lot. I mean, it's pretty hard, isn't it, to go from being with Marie Osmond to not being with her, and then 25 <laughs> years later to ask you to dinner, and then you give in and come back. Isn't that insane? And, it, I mean, we didn't, like, get married after the second date. We, we dated a while. But, um, you know, it wasn't just one of those oh, let's get married again. I mean, there was a lot to think about. I had eight children and I really hadn't planned on getting married again. And it was like, you know, I want to, uh, you know, I love you, but I want to make sure I love all these children. And he does. And so he's he's a really good man. He's a sweetheart and he does love me. <laughs> we were just up on a razor this yesterday. We went out and, and went in the dune buggy and rode around. We just have so much fun. We love to go biking and all kinds of fun things. So In life, there's ups and downs, but I guess where you're at right now is a place of comfort showbiz wise you're packing showrooms physically you're healthy which mm. is all you can ask for mm, that's and all you can ask for and look around show business i mean there's many who've fallen in the last few years which is tragic and then happiness i mean uh, is this a point in your life where you're going i've made it do you feel you've made it oh i don't know if you ever feel you make it i feel like you know nothing is a smooth ride there are ups and ebbs and flows and everything else i feel like through all of it and I've had my share of lows and highs and I was just talking to somebody in meet and greet tonight who was going through some really difficult things I said I've come to the conclusion at this stage in my life that God is no respecter of persons we're all going to go through things and her house had burnt down and I was able to look at her you know how he says there's there's joy in the sorrow there's no joy in sorrow the joy in the sorrow is being able to look at her and say I know how it feels to have your house burn down I know what it's like to lose a child. I know what it is to go through a divorce. I know what it is to struggle with this and that. And and, and um, that's the joy, is to be able to look at somebody else and say, I'm, I'm with you. I understand. And I, I really believe the more you go through, it can turn you bitter or it can turn you better. Right. And it's really a choice. It's really a shift. And I feel like God has been very good to me to give me enough things in life uh, that at this stage, you just take it all and you're grateful for all of it, whatever it is, the good and the bad and in between, because it's all part of this beautiful experience that we call life. And you forget how you impact other people's lives. I mean, I stood there tonight watching the people who had come to 
shake your hand afterwards and you don't need to do that I mean you could go home and go out the back door and nobody would my favourite part I get it and I believe you because these people love you and the genuine passion for the Osmonds is extraordinary so many people come and so many go I guess that's an old ethic as well that that you can't just keep taking as a performer you've got to give something back and they they do love you and they do care for you and I guess you've got to acknowledge that well, it's so funny. A lot of the girls will come and, like tonight, a girl brought a piece of paper and she said, "Did your mom write this to me?" And I looked at the writing and handwriting, and I said, "Absolutely, she did." Wow. And I tell them that during that whole period of time when my brothers were really popular in England and Ireland and Scotland and all through there, um, the fan club, I did that with my mother. I was fascinated why these girls even liked my brothers. I didn't get it. No. <laughs> <laughs> But I. What was it? Their faces? What didn't you get? Well, see, I do my social media. You know, you know, I know exactly what is it. I live with them. But, but um, now, even on my own social media, I will write a Sunday message that comes directly from growing up with this beautiful mother who loved these girls and and boys, and and inspired them and wanted to write to them. But but it all goes back to what you were saying. I believe you can you don't become a whole human being until you learn to give back it is so critical that we serve others because you appreciate everything else so much more Mm -hmm. you know you appreciate your own life you appreciate because when I was in postpartum depression I was the first celebrity to really write about postpartum depression and depression is depression doesn't matter how you get it and one of the things I said in there is that I was in the lowest part of it and I received a calling in my church to serve like in young women's which was like 35 girls and I'm like I can't even remember my own name how I'm going to remember their names and that was the turning point for me and God knew it the minute that I started serving others and and forgetting about my own problems uh, is when he can lift you out of it and so it, it is it's critical so yes the meet and greets all of that uh, these people that my gosh five decades I've been around I've seen everything and also I would say this too is that I've worked with everybody I remember what it was to meet somebody and they were very special I knew what it was like to meet a celebrity and I thought really you can't take five seconds and and I won't ever name names but the ones that were gracious they will for, forever be honored by me and equally the ones that are not nice you will never forget it's like you know then don't leave your house right. you know if you don't have time for somebody don't don't be there uh, because they're the ones that made you who you are and uh, and the minute you forget that it's not good and finally on the you bit the epidemic of weight is something that is a plague not only in this country now but around the world and you've inspired so many to begin to try to lose weight even if they don't succeed you've got to carry on that fight because there are issues as you walk around these casinos even in England we see now that obesity is one of the biggest problems and this is a system for you that has worked and can work for others well the reason why I endorsed it first of all I'm not kidding I don't put my name on anything I don't believe in period Uh, my dad said that's the most important thing you have is your honor you know and so I did everything I swear to you I did all the cookie diets and the protein liquid diets and the drink you have to chew you have to eat and I was getting ready to do dancing with the stars and I was you know I was thinking 50 pounds overweight and spandex not a good idea and so (laughs) so, it was so miserable and so I was at QVC I designed dolls for 25 years and uh They were selling it there, and I thought, what the heck? So I I started it, and I started just dropping weight. But the the secret to Nutrisystem is that they teach you that it is important to eat. See, I was one of those people where I would binge and then starve and binge and then starve. And your body, this apostat inside your brain doesn't know what it's doing. And uh, so they give you foods that kind of put the weight, versions of it that put the weight on you to begin with. And... And yeah, millions of people have lost weight on this program now. It's so fun. And for those trying, is it still a struggle or is it what it is now and you found it's a way of life? It's a way of life. You learn to eat healthy. I have, this is my 10th year of talking about Nutrisystem. I had a lady come here the other night. She had lost 100 pounds and she, started, she, she hugged me. She started crying and she said, this is the first time in 20 years I've been able to wear high heels. Wow. And I just started sobbing. There's a cute little couple between the two of them. They lost 120 pounds. And they said, we used to barely be able to walk. Now we're going hiking in Zions. Wow. 
I mean, it changes their lives. It's so cool. And you'll be grateful to know, finally, that you're in the presence of a star this evening. As the audience left your auditorium, I was sat there and a lady said, could I have a photograph? My daughters love you. Well, there you go. And I said, oh, right, who because do you think? Because they love red hair. Well, I said, who do you think I am? And she said, I don't know. <laughs> But she said, you look like someone famous. And I said, well, who is this actor who looks like me? I'd like to meet him. <laughs> I could cash a few checks on that. What do you think? So thank you for that. If nothing else, I, I declined so the photo. You are so darling. <laughs> Marie Osmond, thank you so much for your time. You're here at the Flamingo doing these shows. How long for now? Because every time I talk to you or Donnie, you say, well, we're going to do another six months. And then six years later, you're still here. Donnie is such a girl. He's making the decisions. No. <laughs> He's impossible. He's wonderful. I tease. I tease. He's a great brother. Um, you know, we didn't think we'd be here this long. Donnie thought that we would finish at eight. Uh, Caesars came to me and said, do you really want to do another year with Donnie? And I said, no. But I said it in German. Nine. <laughs> So, we'll see. <laughs> oh, you like that one. That's good. <laughs> you should put that in. Beautiful. <laughs> so, basically, you're going to you be know here forever. I'm not right upstairs, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you still do your own independent projects. I mean, Donnie was just in England doing that tour early yeah. in the year, and you still do your shows. Absolutely. And, and that's important as well, because you can't get it bored. Is. I mean, it's boring enough to well, see him every you day. You know, it's you can only do so many things here. And I love symphonic. Uh, you know, I do lots of different kinds of, like, I performed at uh, Carnegie Hall and did some things like that. So I really enjoy that. And then, of course, yesterday I was doing a big thing with Paul Mitchell. Uh, they do a big fundraiser and Children's Miracle Network Hospital is part of that. And I'm one of the founders of that with John Schneider. And John and I worked together on a couple other charities. I actually dated John. You know, Dukes of Hazard, John? Mm. Yeah. Things were going great. Was he ginger? I'm trying to think. He's blonde. He's blonde. Bo Duke mm. on the car, I remember. So we've got blonde. What color hair is your husband? We've He's blonde. There's no gingers in this list, are there? <laughs> You've got a ginger I problem. I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not going well. You need to drink a ginger ale and chill. A, either that or go to a hairdresser's and get it dyed. I think that's, that's You're right. not. You're, you're handsome. You're, nah. You are. Although we could go on tour with a musical because that's something you're great at. Beauty and the Beast. I don't know. <laughs> Marie Osmond's here at the Flamingo. Thank you so much for your time. You didn't need to do this, and I really no, appreciate it's it. it's really fine. I normally don't. I feel bad that you had to wait till after meet and greet, but... Uh, it was great. I had a lady ask for a photo who didn't know who I was. Well, she thought you were a celebrity. It's very humbling. <laughs> I don't know who she thought I was. You must be exhausted. I am flat out. I'm amazed I'm not taking a nap. <laughs> But you are, and you don't know it. <laughs> Inside and out. Hey, listen, thank you thank so, you much. so some much. Some people in life drain the life out of you, and some people radiate. And if you want 90 minutes of incredible entertainment done by two pros who just give their hearts on stage, that's you and Donnie. Congratulations. Oh, you lovely. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. You're lovely so sweet. You. Good to see you. It takes two, baby. It takes the Review two. Journal voted it the best show in Las Vegas. They've been voted the best performers in Las Vegas. It's the show you must see with non-stop entertainment from beginning to end. If you want entertainment, then it's the Donnie and Marie Show, only at the fabulous Flamingo Las Vegas. For tickets, call 702-777-2782.